In the previous video on sketching quadratics, we looked how we could find the y-intercept of our quadratic graph, and we found how we could find the x-intercepts of our quadratic graph. Now, for some quadratic graphs, the problem is that they never actually intercept the x-axis. So for this example, if we made y zero, and that's how you find the x-intercepts, that's what we previously saw, if we attempted to factorise it, it would fail because we can't find two numbers which add to give 4 and times to give 7. And even if we tried to use the quadratic formula to find the values of x for when y was 0, it would fail because we'd end up square rooting a negative number. And because you can't square root a negative number to get a sort of normal number, it means it never actually intercepts the x-axis. But there's still interesting information about the graph we can determine that allows us to sketch it effectively. Firstly, we still can find the y-intercept. There is a y-intercept here, and we can do that by making x equal to 0. So if x was 0, because we can see here the x value is 0 when you're on the y-axis, then we can see that the y value is 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 7. And that means that y is 0 plus 0 plus 7, which is 7. So we could work out that this y-intercept here was 7. Now we might also want to find out something called the turning point. And what the turning point of a graph is, is where the gradient is 0. And remember the gradient is the steepness. Can you see the steepness here? That it's completely horizontal. It's neither going uphill nor downhill. It has no gradient there. And that, we say, is a turning point. In this particular case, we call that a minimum point. Now, how do we find that? Well, you do something called completing the square. And if you haven't seen my video on completing the square, then I recommend you watch that first. But we will recap it here. So, let's use this equation to complete the square. What we do is we halve the number on front of the x, the coefficient of x. So half of 4 is 2, and what we write is x plus 2 squared. And then remember that whatever this number is squared, we subtract it. And the reason for that is if you were to expand x plus 2 squared, so if we wrote x plus 2 times x plus 2, we would get x squared, we'd also get plus 2x, we'd also get another 2x, which is 4x, but we'd also get 4. But we only want x squared plus 4x here, we don't want that 4, so we subtract it after. But we've still got this 7 here, so we've got that here is x squared plus 4x, and then we've got the plus 7, and then let's just simplify that, so we get x plus 2 squared plus 3. Now, how does this allow us to determine this minimum point here? Now, suppose we were to try different values of x and substitute it in here to try and make the y value as small as possible. Because can you see on this graph here, for all the different points we have, the y value is the smallest. It's the minimum value here. Now, let's try different values of x. Let's say we tried, I don't know, um, if x was equal to 4, then we'd get y is equal to 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 squared is 36 plus 3 is 39. Now can we do better than that? Can we make y smaller? What if we made um, x equal to 0? And we substituted that in. Then we get y is equal to 0 plus 2 squared. Well, that's 4 plus 3 is 7. So we get y equals 7. Now that's better. Can we do even better? Well, yes, we can. If we make x equal to minus 2, then minus 2 plus 2 squared, that 0 squared plus 3 is 3. And in fact, that's the smallest value of y you can get by substituting the different values of x into this equation. And the reason is, is because whenever you square any number, it's always going to be at least 0. If you square a negative number, it's positive. If you square a positive number, it's positive. And if you square 0, you get 0. And 0 is the smallest you can get if you square a number. So in this particular case, we find that this minimum point occurs when x is minus 2 and the y value will be 3. So the coordinate of p is minus 2, 3. And in general, if you've managed to complete the square, so if y is equal to x plus a squared plus b, then the minimum point, the turning point, will be minus a b.
And that's a very important point, so I'm going to put a box around it. And the reason is, is because you want this squared thing to be as small as possible. The smallest you can make a squared thing is zero, so what do we make x to make this thing zero? Well, we make it minus a, because then minus a plus a will be zero. And if x was minus a, this is the whole thing is zero, and then y will be zero plus b, and we get b as the y value. Basically, whatever number's next to the x in this bracket, we negate that and use that as the x value of our turning point, and then whatever this number is, we use as our y value of the turning point. Now let's do a few more examples. We've got y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10, and we want to identify the turning point. So as before, we complete the square. So that's going to be x, and then half that number, so half of minus 6 is minus 3, squared. Do you remember we square that? So the square of minus 3 is 9, and then we always subtract it. This should always be a minus here after the square. And then we still got that plus 10 on the end. And then that's going to be x minus 3 squared plus 1. And that means the turning point, in this case the minimum point, Well, do you remember we negate that number, so negate, the negation of minus 3 is positive 3, so that's the x value, and then we use that number there as the y value, so 1. So if we draw that, we have a y-intercept of 10, because if x was 0, we have 0 squared minus 0 plus 10, the y-intercept is 10. In general, for quadratic, the number on its own at the end is going to be the y-intercept. And then the minimum point is 3, 1. So if we plot that, we have 3, 1. And then we get, that's the minimum point, so it's coming out from there, like that. Let's do a third example. We've got y is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 13. Now this one is slightly harder to complete the square, but what we do, if you recall, is that we, whatever number is in front of the x squared, we factorise that out of the first two terms. So that's going to be 2 brackets x squared plus 4x, and we leave that plus 13 just outside the brackets. And then do you remember, what we do is if I just write everything outside of the brackets, we complete the square inside the brackets. So, we're going to have a bracket inside the bracket, x plus that number halved, which is 2, squared, and then we do that number squared and subtract it, so it's minus 4. Then we expand out the outer bracket, so we have 2 times x plus 2 squared, which is just 2x plus 2 squared. We have 2 times minus 4, which is minus 8, and then we've still got that plus 13 there. And then just simplify that a bit. We get 2x plus 2 squared minus 8 plus 13 is plus 5. And that means the minimum point, the turning point, is equal to... Now, that number doesn't affect what the turning point is. We just care that we negate that number. The negation of that is minus 2. And then the y value is that number there. And then if we draw it, the y-intercept is 13. It's that number on its own there. And then the minimum point is minus 2, 5. So minus 2, 5. Doesn't really matter where it is, as long as it's in the right quadrant. And then I'm just going to draw a line coming out from there. Now, one further hard example, we've got a negative quadratic this time because the number in front of the x squared is negative. It's minus 1x squared. So how do we do this? We did exactly the same as we did with the previous example. We should probably reorder these terms first so that the x squared term is first. And I'm just going to write minus 1x squared just to make that 1 explicit. And then we've got the x term and then we've got that plus 1 there. So I've just reordered the terms, that's all. Now let's complete the square in the same way. We factorise whatever number is on front of the x squared, in this case minus 1. So it's minus 1 x squared. Now minus 1 times what is 4x? Well, it's minus 4x. Minus 1 times minus 4x is positive 4x. We've still got that plus 1 outside there. And then as before, inside that bracket, we complete the square. So we've got x and then half of minus 4 is minus 2. That squared, 
minus 2 squared is 4, and we subtract that, and then we expand out the outer bracket. So we've got minus 1 times x minus 2 squared, and then we've got minus 1 times minus 4, which is plus 4, and we've still got that plus 1 there, and that gives us minus 1, or just minus x minus 2 squared, plus 5, and just to make it look a bit prettier, generally if you have a negative something plus something, we put the positive thing first. So we could write the 5 first, and we get 5 minus x minus 2 squared. Now this is a bit different this time, because instead of a minimum point, we actually get a maximum point. If you think that this is a frowny face shape, we've got a negative number in the front of the x squared, we know it's a frowny face shape, so we actually have a maximum point on that frowny face shape, don't we? We don't have a minimum point. Now we want to try and make y as big as possible, and to do that we want to subtract as small as numbers possible. So if something is squared, we know it's at least zero, so what's the smallest number we can subtract? Well it's zero, isn't it? What should we make x to make this zero, well two, and if x was two, what would y be? Well, two minus two squared is zero is squared, and then five minus zero is five. So the x value would be two, and the y value would be five. So it's very similar to what we had before, but we've got a maximum now, and just as before, we negate the number in the brackets, so the negation of minus two is positive two, and then we use the other number outside the bracket as the y value, so it's 2, 5. So if we were to sketch this, we know the y-intercept is the number on its own, so it's the 1, and then the maximum point is 2, 5, which is here. So we just draw that, we get this shape here. Now let's do some fine questions. I want you to find the minimum or maximum point of y equals x squared minus 10x plus 30, and y equals 18x minus 3x squared minus 31. The second one is much harder. You may want to stop the video now to have a go at that. Now let's do this. So the first one we've got, y equal to x squared minus 10x plus 30. We just complete the square, so it's going to be x minus, half of that is minus 5 squared. That squared is 25, so we subtract 25 plus 30 and simplify that. We get y equal to x minus 5 squared plus 5, and that means the minimum point, the turning point, is negate that, we get 5, and use that as a y value, we get 5. So that is the minimum point. Now with this second test your understanding question, we should reorder the terms first so that the x squared term is first. So we've got y is equal to minus 3x squared, then we have the x term plus 18x, and then the constant term here. And as we did in a previous example, whatever number is in front of the x squared, we factorise out. So the minus 3 is on the front, so we factorise out minus 3 from the first two terms. So we got minus 3 times x squared. And we've got minus 3 times what is 18x? Well, it's minus 6x. We've still got that minus 31 there. And then if we just copy everything outside the brackets, we then complete the square inside that bracket. So that's going to be x minus 3 squared minus 9. And then let's expand out this outer bracket. So we have minus 3 times that, which is minus 3x minus 3 squared. We have minus 3 times minus 9, which is positive 27. And we've also got this minus 31 here. And then if we just simplify that a bit, we get minus 3, x minus 3 squared. And 27 minus 31 is minus 4. And that means the maximum point is going to be, well, we negate that, so it's positive 3 and we use this value for the y value, which is minus 4. And if we were to sketch that, we have a y-intercept of minus 31, because that is the constant term. And then we've got this maximum point here, which is 3 minus 4. So 3 minus 4, let's just say it's here. And then it's going to curve around like that.